storm over global warming. Skeptics claim that emails hacked from a leading British research center prove that climate change data was manipulated and that global warming is, in fact, not happening at all. Well, the news did get a lot of people a little more confused about what the truth really might be, so we asked Pulitzer Prize-winning author Tom Friedman for some answers. Take a look. Give me your take on this uh, scandal, if we can call it that, and what it, what it has done to the credibility of the environmental movement overall. Well, these were hacked uh, emails from uh, one of the important climate research centers over in the, over in the UK. And uh, frankly, Campbell is someone who follows this issue, cares about it. I, I found some of those emails disappointing, frankly, um, in uh, the kind of way in which it seemed that they were trying to keep certain research out, you know, uh, of the discussion. Because I think transparency here is really is everything. is everything. Okay, you say this, I say that. Here's my data. Here's here's your data. Um, that said, okay. Uh, to me, we have to understand, you know, the whole climate change issue. This, the climate is the most complex system you can possibly imagine. But what, what do we know? What does the, what does your viewer want to know when they think about? It? We know that the Earth is enveloped, okay, by a greenhouse by a greenhouse gas blanket. That's what actually keeps, creates this greenhouse effect that we have a nice warm Earth, even though you know it's freezing out there, as you know, when you go right. up in a in a spaceship, all right. And that greenhouse blanket is made up of CO2 and methane and other other greenhouse gases. You pump more carbon dioxide, more, more CO2 into that blanket, it'll get thicker. When it gets thicker, it'll trap more heat. Average temperatures will rise. Ice will melt. What we don't know, and this is what the debate is about, is exactly what the effects will be. We don't know whether 100% for sure that something else in the climate won't compensate for that rising temperature. That's what the debate is up between deniers, skeptics, whatever, right. and, and scientists. But here's my take on it. Um, maybe it isn't 90%, like some of the skeptics say, maybe it's only 80%, maybe it's 50%. But you know what that means? There's a 50% chance that when you put that, that CO2 in the atmosphere, it stays there for about 3,000 years. So if we keep putting it there, and we, it stays there for 3,000 years, and it does start raising temperatures, it's going to be hot here, Campbell, for a long, long time. So to me, the what, bottom line, the bottom line is, is that the risk is still there. They say it's only, what if they said it's just a 10% chance? What if I told you there's a 10% chance if you keep smoking, you're going to die of cancer? Still well, reason enough to right, go Exactly right. right. And so, and this ain't 10%. This is, this is a lot higher. So that's kind of how I deal with it. To, to that point, because you have written so much about this, and, and the president's going to Copenhagen. This is going to yeah. be a big moment, emails aside. Absolutely. Do you think the world fully appreciates right now what's at stake here? It's hard. You see, the hard thing about the climate issue is that um, we're actually dealing with a gas, CO2, you can't see, touch, or smell. So there is no Pearl Harbor. Boy, when, when Pearl Harbor happened, people saw that. They said, wow, we've got to react. We've got to rebuild our army, and we've got to go to war. The problem with the climate issue is when Pearl Harbor happens, it's too late. And that means it's the toughest leadership issue in the world. You actually have to get people mobilized on a Pearl Harbor level without Pearl Harbor. You have Very been, hard. If to, to, to this issue, you, you have been advocating for a long time for a gas tax in yes. this country. Do you think, I mean, look at how people went crazy when yeah. gas prices were through the roof, uh, what, last summer. Yeah. Do you think it, it, it is politically viable in any way, shape, or form for that to ever happen? Well, you know, somewhere along the way something's going to have to give. Because, let's go back to, we talked the other day about Afghanistan. Um, how are we going to pay for this? Are we going to borrow more money in Ch from China to now try to stabilize Afghanistan so it'll be safe for Chinese mining companies? I mean, we've got to pay for this somehow, some way. Why not have a tax on gasoline that actually has multiple advantages, reduces uh, driving and pollution, stimulates innovation, and makes us less dependent on the very people who draw a bullseye on our back. Makes sense to me. You have also drawn this uh, interesting connection between climate change and the financial crisis. Explain that to people. Well, um, I actually rewrote the front of my book for the paperback edition. It's now called Why Citibank, Iceland's Banks, and the Ice Banks of Antarctica All Melted at the Same Time. Or if you don't like that, why Bear Stearns and the Polar Bear both faced extinction at the same time. <laughs> um, and the reason is they actually are both based on the same accounting. That is, what we call the Great Recession has actually been an environmental crisis and an economic crisis coming together. How so? Well, in the financial world, what did we do? We allowed people to massively underprice risk, 
the risk of subprime mortgages. We allowed them to privatize the gains from selling those mortgages. And then when they all blew up, we allowed them to socialize the losses. You and me and all our neighbors basically picked up the tab. We're doing the same in nature. We allow people to massively underprice the risk of emitting carbon molecules. We allow them to privatize the gains from cheap coal-based electricity. And we are socializing the losses by charging all those CO2 molecules in the atmosphere on our kids' visa cards, which they will play for, pay for in the form of future climate change. So we're actually, we're actually practicing the same faulty accounting in both the market and Mother Nature. And that's why you really need to bring sustainability and ethic of sustainability to both. Tom Friedman. On that note, <laughs> thank you, Tom. Pleasure.